What happened to you? Covered in blood! My high school freshman daughter, who was supposed to have gone to visit my in-law's house, came back home with blood flowing from her forehead, so I screamed. After quickly treating her, I immediately contacted my husband. When he answered the phone, I shouted at him without thinking. Where are you? Didn't I tell you I'm on a business trip? I was stunned by his unexpected response. After all, I had seen off my husband and daughter who were supposed to visit my in-laws home five days ago. In front of me was my daughter with a serious injury. Seeing me confused, my daughter revealed a shocking fact. My name is Mia Smith. I am a 40-year-old part-time housewife. My husband Michael is a salesperson who visits various schools to sell high school teaching materials. He says that trust is important, and he always behaves properly, which is cool. My daughter Sophia became a high school freshman this fall. She used to be so clingy that she couldn't leave my side, but now she's so reliable that she makes dinner and waits for me when I come home from work. I was living peacefully with my husband and daughter, but five years ago, my mother became bedridden due to an internal illness. Since then, I've been busy with caregiving and part-time work. I couldn't even visit my in-law's house because of my mother's illness, and I couldn't make it happen even though I thought I should go there around Christmas. However, at that time... You don't have to push yourself. It's good that you have an understanding husband. He went to my in-law's house alone while joking and laughing. I felt very sorry, but I was grateful because I was busy taking care of my mother. However, three years ago, my mother-in-law died suddenly in an accident. My father-in-law was very depressed because they were very close, and Michael's visits to my in-law's house increased more and more. I'll take my father on a trip to cheer him up. I want to treat him to delicious sushi. Furthermore, the expenses increased to $200 or $400 every time he visited my father-in-law's house. However, as someone who was not going back to my in-law's house because I was only taking care of my mother, I couldn't say anything about the money. One day... My husband talked to me about the cost of visiting my father-in-law, as usual. I need $700 for the next visit. What? I wondered if such a large amount of money was needed for just one visit, but my husband didn't tell me the details of how the money would be used. It must be necessary money. I convinced myself that it was also something to make my father-in-law happy. However, I didn't have any spare money at hand due to the sudden expense, so I had to temporarily withdraw money from the account where I had saved my daughter's tuition fees. From now on, I have to refrain from going to the hair salon for a while and not touch Sophia's money. From there, I worked hard to save money and gradually returned it to my daughter's account. Sophia's entrance exam went well, and while we were taking a break. I want to see Sophia after a long time. Great! I'll take Sophia and my dad out for crab. It's a reward for always working hard. Really? Yay! Thank you always. She never complained even though she was always being patient, and she helped me take care of my mother. I was filled with gratitude. On the morning of the day they were to leave, Sophia waved goodbye cheerfully and said she would buy souvenirs. Have fun. Everyone in the family was smiling. At that time, we had no idea that something like that would happen. It's been five days since Michael and my daughter went to my father-in-law's house. 
I was preparing lunch in the kitchen when I heard the sound of the front door opening with a bang. Who is it without ringing the doorbell? I was surprised and answered it loudly as I headed for the entrance. To my surprise, Sophia was standing there with blood flowing from her forehead. What happened? I screamed, looking around to ask my husband what was going on, but he wasn't there. I brought my trembling daughter into the house and immediately called Michael. Where are you? I'm at work. Didn't I tell you I'm on a business trip since the day after I took Sophia to my father's house? I was in great confusion. I didn't know anything about that. And most importantly, Sophia came back home with a serious injury. She probably just fell. Teenage girls tend to exaggerate, so don't believe everything she says. Bye. He hung up the phone. I couldn't believe such a crazy story, so I couldn't just say yes, I see. While treating my daughter's wounds, I asked her, what happened? Did dad go to work? Sophia, with a pale face and trembling lips, muttered, daddy pushed me. I was surprised, but I listened to her story while gently rubbing her back. Then I found out an unbelievable fact. My husband had been keeping a secret from us, and he had hurt Sophia because she found out about it. That wasn't all. He threatened Sophia, who was bleeding, saying, Tell someone about this. Next time, you won't get away with just an injury. Just then, my father-in-law returned from his outing, and Sophia ran away from my in-law's house while my husband was distracted. Fortunately, Sophia had some money, so she was able to take the train alone, but she must have been so anxious while hiding her injury and returning home. I will never forgive anyone who hurts my lovely Sophia. I was angry not only about my husband hitting our daughter but also about the secret he had been keeping. I vowed to take revenge. After hearing all of Michael's misdeeds, I picked up my smartphone to call my father-in-law, but was surprised to see a mountain of missed calls from him. Oh, I'm sorry. I was cooking and didn't notice the phone ringing. It's okay. More importantly, Sophia had an urgent matter and went back home. I'm worried if she arrived there safely, so I called many times. I was speechless after hearing my father-in-law's story. My husband had been covering up the fact that our daughter, who he had injured, had run away to our house with such a lie. So I told my father-in-law everything I heard from my daughter. I will take her to the hospital, so it's okay. But I can't forgive Michael. I want to punish him, so can you keep him at your house? My father-in-law agreed to help me and said he would convince Michael to stay at his house for a while. Meanwhile, I prepared to confront my husband by running around and getting everything ready. Five days later, after the investigation of Michael's secret was completed, I headed to my father-in-law's house. When I tried to ring the doorbell, I saw my daughter running towards me, gasping for breath. Mom, wait a minute. I told you to wait at home. That's impossible. I need to settle this injury. I didn't want to show my parents fighting in front of Sophia, so I had planned to go to my father-in-law's house alone. However, Sophia was not going to be quiet. I think I have the right to speak up too. Sophia refused to back down. I was reluctant, but I accepted my daughter's anger and decided to fight with her. After being greeted by my father-in-law, 
who already knew about my plan. I entered the living room and saw my husband, who seemed to have just woken up, lying on the sofa in his pajamas and watching TV, despite it being noon. Oh, wasn't it a business trip? I suddenly asked, and Michael jumped up in surprise. Uh, no. I was supposed to go, but it got cancelled. He began to make excuses. Well, that doesn't matter. I want to know about Sophia's injury. Oh, yeah, it's a stinky story. She fell down the stairs and hit her forehead. I wanted to shout at him for being so slippery, but my father-in-law spoke first. Enough already. We know that Sophia's injury is your fault. Sophia also raised her voice in agreement, and I glared at Michael. The guilty husband was flustered, but then he suddenly had an idea and looked proud as he spoke. You haven't visited my father's house for a long time, but you act like you're so great. I cherished my father more than you guys did not. He laughed and smirked, thinking I wouldn't say anything. It was true that I hadn't said anything because I thought he was right. However, I already knew from Sophia's story that my husband's words were full of lies. Really? Can you say that it is cherishing your father when you go back to your father's house but let your daughter do all the housework instead of spending time with your father? Yes. You've been lazing around at home since we came here. Shut up. It's just this time. I'm always working hard. I saw Michael acting so arrogantly and took out my father-in-law's account book, which I had taken in advance. It contained not only the inflow and outflow of money but also detailed records of Michael's behavior at my father-in-law's house. Let me tell you what's written here. On June 10th, I gave Michael $150 for transportation. He lounged around all day and went out at night as usual, returning in the morning. Food expenses were high because Michael was there. I read the contents in a monotone voice. According to the book, Michael lied that I didn't even pay for transportation every time he visited my father-in-law's house and received money from his father every time. Taking advantage of the fact that I didn't visit my in-law's house, Michael had made me out to be a stingy wife and had tried to get sympathy from his father. Aren't you ashamed of living off your parent at your age? And you received so much help from him. You didn't even get an allowance, and you came to my house often. I felt sorry for you and did many things for you, but it was all nonsense. We blamed him, and Michael choked on his words and fell silent. I wonder what you used the money you swindled from your father for. Well, that's... You don't have to say anything. You're probably just thinking of another terrible lie. After Michael mumbled something, I ignored him and presented a certain photo in front of him. You wanted the money so badly because you were living it up in a place like this, weren't you? How do you know about this place? The photo showed my husband entering a shady massage parlor. He probably didn't expect that it was so well known. Michael turned pale. In fact, this was the secret that Sophia learned during her visit. She thought that Michael was taking good care of his father, but he kept going out at night and returning in the morning. So she secretly investigated him. She installed an app on his phone that would tell her his location without Michael knowing. When Michael went out, she checked his location on her computer and found that he was always at the same place. When my daughter searched on the internet, it was a service for men at night. When she was about to call to inform me of what happened, Michael came home. 
He saw Sophia searching for the location and details of the place on the computer and got angry, then pushed her. Sophia hit her head on the corner of the dresser and bled. You know the rest. After hearing Sophia's story, I left my mother in the care of a professional caregiver for a few days and staked out the place to gather evidence of Michael's spending. I took photos of him entering and leaving the place. When I saw my husband, who walked into the place with a light step, I was shocked. You used the money we saved for Sophia's tuition fees for this? Daddy is the worst. Given the irrefutable evidence of the photo, my husband muttered in a small voice. It's normal for a man to do this kind of thing. He then looked up at my father-in-law and sought his agreement with an upward glance. What are you talking about? You can't afford to waste money on night outings when you have to pay for your child's education. I'm tired from work too. What's wrong with taking a break? My daughter sighed as if she were disgusted with her father's attitude. Mom, do you know what kind of place that is? Huh? No, I don't. I just took pictures and left. I thought so. Here you go. Sophia placed several sheets of paper with the place's homepage printed on them on the table. When my father-in-law and I peered inside, we saw that the girl working there was wearing a school uniform. Although everyone seemed to be an adult, it was a place where they provided services in cosplay. Huh. I can't believe I showed my daughter this kind of world at her age. I was filled with regret, but my daughter was unfazed. So this is what daddy likes. Gross. She shivered as if she had a chill as she handed a piece of paper to her father. You don't have to say it like that. If the schools affiliated with your business partner find out that you love uniforms, it would be a huge problem. I can't imagine the company that sells teaching materials to the schools would continue to employ someone with such a fetish. My husband turned pale as I gave him a cold look. Oh, right. I immediately took out his schedule book. Since it had been left in his business bag, I was able to find it easily. I can see from this that all the schools you are attending are now known. Shall I contact these business partners about your lovely hobby? Please don't do that. I'm sorry. I went too far. I'll change my ways from now on. He must have realized that he couldn't get away with it. He began to tremble and sat down on the spot. He is apologizing desperately, but it's unforgivable that he has been going to the place for years, spending money recklessly, and even causing his daughter to get hurt. Who would believe a liar like Daddy? I'm ready to consult a lawyer and prepare for divorce. You will pay me compensation for the money you spend extravagantly so far. This is the end of our relationship. No. Don't do that. Gross. My husband tried to cling to Sophia, but she immediately avoided him and eventually burst into tears. We looked at him with cold eyes as he cried in such a pathetic manner. The divorce was finalized soon after, and my husband was ordered to pay $10,000 for his reckless spending and $20,000 in compensation. Then, somehow, his frequent visits to that place were discovered by his company, and Michael was fired. He was also cut off by his father and now lives alone in a rundown house. He is surviving on day labor, but he can't afford to pay the compensation, so he ended up borrowing money from shady lenders and is now living in fear of debt collectors. On the other hand, I had more free time after the divorce. With my daughter's help, 
My mother's condition improved dramatically, and she no longer needed care. Now, the three of us women live together happily and peacefully. How was this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Thank you for always taking care of Daisy and Annabelle. My husband said as he prepared lunch for both of us. However, he had a trick up his sleeve and I lost consciousness shortly after starting to eat. The next thing I knew, I was in a hospital bed. Apparently, I survived. When I collapsed, my husband said, I'm finally free. I thought he was going to kill me. My name is Vivian, and I'm 33 years old. I have a husband named Ashton who is two years older than me, and we have twin daughters named Daisy and Annabelle who are five years old. We're a family of four. Since my husband and I both work, our daughters go to daycare. They have personalities that are very similar to mine. They're strong-willed and speak their minds, but they don't bully others. They're the type of kids who can't leave a friend alone when they're alone. They're also a bit bigger than other kids, so they're natural leaders. I think I'm a pretty straightforward person too. I'm often relied on at work, and I think I'm a bit of a big sister. On the other hand, my husband, the only man in the family, is a bit timid. I often see him being pushed around by our daughters when they ask him to take them somewhere on holidays. However, it doesn't seem like he minds being pushed around like that. I think he just wants to fulfill our cute daughter's wishes. I thought our family of four would continue to live together happily and cheerfully, but my husband has been changing little by little. It started with something small. His overtime work increased a little. Until now, my husband had been avoiding overtime work to spend time with our daughters. Since I have to work overtime, I used to ask him to pick up our daughters from daycare when he came home on time. However, he started working overtime once or twice a week, which was a change from before. I understand that it can't be helped if it's work. I managed to adjust my schedule and started picking up our daughters from daycare. However, our daughters were a little unhappy about it. Actually, when my husband picked them up, he bought them sweets about half the time on the way back. They complained that they couldn't get sweets anymore because I was picking them up. Well, no matter how much they complain, I'm not as sweet as my husband, so I don't intend to buy them sweets. With this kind of life continuing, my husband's overtime work is said to increase a little more. The number of days won't change, but the hours will be longer. I don't know what kind of work my husband does since we work for different companies. I couldn't bring myself to blame my husband, who looked apologetic, and had no choice but to accept it. However, after living like this for two months, I became curious about what was going on. So I decided to ask my husband directly. Hey, it's been two months since you started working overtime. Isn't there an end in sight for your work? Can you tell me what kind of work you do? My husband replied. Vivian wouldn't understand even if I told you. I'm just doing my job to the best of my ability. Why are you blaming me like that? He said this in a pretty strong tone, which I didn't expect. I know it's work, but I just wanted to know what kind of work it is. I understand that it's work. But Daisy and Annabelle are lonely. It would be nice if you could come home early once in a while. They seem to be looking forward to you picking them up from daycare. My husband replied. Those two aren't looking forward to me picking them up. They're just interested in the sweets I buy them. They're not lonely. 
I was speechless. I never expected my husband to say something like that. Taking advantage of the fact that I didn't answer, my husband finally said. I'm going to be busy with work from now on. It seemed like he wanted to end the conversation. I was so sad about my husband's change that I wondered if his personality had changed because of the overtime work. Another month passed. My husband started working overtime almost every week. On days when I couldn't finish work, I had no choice but to put our daughters in extended daycare. As a result, their bedtime became later, which I knew wasn't good for their health. But work wouldn't wait. And then my husband started going out alone even on holidays. Until recently, he would respond to our daughter's requests, but now he avoids them by saying things like, I feel like going out alone today, or, I have to work on my day off today, or, I'm tired today, so please be quiet. Our daughters look obviously lonely. Is daddy busy today too? Won't he play with Annabelle and me? When she says something like this, I get sad too. So I started taking them out more. I also borrowed my parents' help to make up for the reduced time I spent with my husband. I started to think that my husband's behavior had changed too much. I began to think that this was a family crisis. And then the incident happened. It was a holiday. Our daughters were being taken care of by my parents. My husband was at home on a rare holiday and said to me, I'll make lunch today, so let's eat together. It had been months since my husband cooked for me. I think it was before he started working overtime. It's rare. I couldn't be happy about it, so I said this. It's a thank you for always taking care of Daisy and Annabelle. He started making lunch. He said he could do it alone, so he didn't let me into the kitchen. And in no time, he finished making beef stew for lunch. When he was ready, he called me to the dining room. Okay, it's ready. Let's eat together. He said it brightly. Even though it was lunchtime, he took out wine. Daisy and Annabelle aren't here today, so how about some wine? Although I thought it was really unusual, I decided to have some wine that would go well with the beef stew. Cheers! And so the meal began. The beef stew my husband made was very delicious and went well with the wine. As I ate a little more, I began to feel sick. Oh. What happened? At the same time, I started to feel sleepy. Was I already drunk? I'm usually good with alcohol. But the sickness and sleepiness only got worse, and I ended up losing consciousness. Just before I lost consciousness, I heard my husband say, I'm finally free. The next day, I woke up in an unfamiliar place. My father-in-law was the first to notice that I had woken up. Vivian, are you awake? Don't worry. You're in the hospital. Hospital? Why am I here? My questions were not answered. Then I saw my mother-in-law crying in the corner of the hospital room. What's wrong? When I spoke up, my mother-in-law approached me with a start. Vivian, I'm really sorry about Ashton. It seemed that my husband was involved in my hospitalization. But he wasn't here. Where is Ashton now? When I asked, my in-laws' faces clouded over a little. I'm sorry, but after Ashton told us that you had collapsed, he disappeared without saying anything. 
We've been asking around since yesterday, but we don't know where he is. That's what my mother-in-law said. Was my husband gone? I had a vague idea of where he might be. But what about my condition? My father-in-law answered that question. It seems that there were sleeping pills and pesticides mixed in with yesterday's lunch. Vivian ate it and got sick. And the wine you drank with it doubled the effect of the sleeping pills. Did my husband use pesticides? Thanks to the early discovery, we were able to treat it quickly. That's what my father-in-law said. Why did my husband contact my in-laws even though he had put pesticides in my food himself? I forgot to ask that. He must have wanted to kill me, judging from his words about being free. There were many mysteries about my husband's words and actions. My parents took care of my daughters while I was unconscious. That's why they didn't come to the hospital room. I finally understood that. I stayed in the hospital for one more day for tests and was discharged the next day. I was surprised that I was so energetic despite having eaten pesticides. My parents-in-law accompanied me with apologetic faces. I felt more sorry for them than they did for me. After I was discharged, I went to see how my daughters were doing. Even though I hadn't seen them for three days, it felt like a long-awaited reunion. And I asked them to stay at my parents' house for a little longer. I had to head to the battlefield. The battlefield was an apartment. I rang the intercom with determination. Then I heard a man's voice from inside. It was a voice I recognized. Yes, who is it? It's me. Vivian. I answered, and there was a loud noise from inside. After a while, the door opened, and my husband came out. His face was pale. Ah, uh, Vivian, why are you here? That was my husband's first word. A wife should know where her cheating husband is. I said it loudly on purpose. Then my husband panicked. Can you speak a little quieter? He said that. Why don't you let me in? I want to meet your mistress. I said it without lowering my voice. It was a bit unfair, but it was a strategy one had to use to talk inside. My husband reluctantly let me into the room. I won my strategy. The woman inside should be named Cecilia. The reason I ended up in this apartment and why I know this woman's name is that I had a private investigator investigate it. Cecilia was a woman who looked good in a dress, unlike me, who always wore pants. This was the first time we met, but I knew from the investigation report that she had a neat personality. Well, I don't know if someone with a neat personality is really neat when they're cheating on someone else's husband. But she looked cute, and her personality was the opposite of mine. My husband asked me with a pale face. Uh, are you okay? Oh, right. I forgot. My husband made me drink pesticides. And sleeping pills too. What was the meaning of these sleeping pills? I had a lot of questions to ask. I'm fine. I had a thorough examination and everything's okay. But why did you try to kill me? You called your mother early on, but you wanted to kill me? And what was the reason for the sleeping pills? I don't understand your behavior at all. Then my husband muttered something. 
I didn't try to kill you. Well, maybe I thought about it at first, so I gave you sleeping pills to delay the discovery. But I got scared, so I couldn't call an ambulance, but I called my mother. If you were found, I thought my mother would take you to the hospital. I see. So you ran away here? I said it sarcastically. But it was true. I'm sorry. I might have thought about killing you at first, but I didn't do it, did I? So can you forgive me? Huh? I sighed heavily. I couldn't forgive him for trying to kill me. Besides only with such a cheap apology. I want to know what you wanted to do after trying to kill me. Did you want to remarry Cecilia who is there? And what did you mean when you said you became free on the day you put pesticides in my food? What does that mean? I asked him a series of questions. My husband answered slowly while looking flustered. I was going to remarry Cecilia if you were dead. I was tired. I couldn't keep up with the power of you, Daisy, and Annabelle. That's why I said I became free. I see. So that's what it was. Was my weak-willed husband really cornered? But he was cheating on me? You cheated on me and then you're saying we cornered you? What are you talking about? You made an escape route for yourself. Who came up with this plan? If you say you came up with it because you were cornered, I can believe you, but if Cecilia is involved even a little bit, I won't forgive you. Then Cecilia spoke up. I came up with this plan. I couldn't stand to see Ashton being cornered like that. So if you won't forgive him, then I'm also. Was she trying to feel like a supportive wife? But she had made a very dangerous plan. So in the end, you two came up with the plan together. I understand. I recorded this testimony, so I'll file a complaint with the police. If you have anything to say in defense of your infidelity, please do. I'll record it on this voice recorder and let my lawyer listen to it later. Let's see which one of us can recommend divorce more advantageously. I said that and took out the voice recorder that I had been recording until now. I got tired of the busy daily life, and then Cecilia from the same company started to look very cute to me. I knew it was wrong. I should have divorced Vivian before cheating. I'm really sorry. And I don't need Daisy in Annabelle's custody. I want to live quietly with Cecilia from now on. He apologized, but he still cheated on me, and he didn't care about our daughters. Then you'll pay for the infidelity compensation and Daisy and Annabelle's child support every month. Even if you say you're giving up custody, they're still your children. Paying child support is your duty as a parent. Then? I know that. I just don't want to live with them. But I think they're cute. I'll pay child support, so I want to see them occasionally. You can't do that. You're going to cheat because you hate Daisy and Annabelle, right? That's too selfish of you. Well, I'll explain this to Daisy and Annabelle and let you see them if they want to, but... My husband slumped down. And then I said, Let's decide the amount of compensation for the divorce through a lawyer later. And as for the matter of you trying to kill me, 
I'm not going to settle or anything, so you better pay for your crime. And the compensation for the pain you caused me will be added to the compensation for the affair, so be prepared. My husband seemed to lower his head even more. Then I turned to Cecilia. You've been acting cool since a while ago, but you're going to be arrested by the police too. And I'm going to make you pay the compensation for the affair too, so you better be prepared. Cecilia had no choice but to slump down too. The rest of the story. My husband and Cecilia were taken away by the police after I submitted the complaint and the voice recorder data. I think they will probably be arrested for attempted murder. They won't be able to avoid going to prison once the sentence is confirmed. Before that, I divorced my husband. The compensation I received from my ex-husband and Cecilia was quite a large amount. And the monthly child support my ex-husband had to pay for two children was $800 a month. How hard it must be to pay this amount while paying back the debt of compensation that he and Cecilia chose. By the way, my ex-in-laws were completely on my side and they said they cut off their ties with their son. This means that my ex-husband has no one to rely on anymore. Well, I hope he remarries Cecilia or something and keeps paying the child support. As for me, I decided to go back to my parents' house with Daisy and Annabelle. It took a little longer to commute from my parents' house but I still managed to make it, so I decided to do my best. I told Daisy and Annabelle the reason for divorcing my ex-husband as much as they could understand. And then I asked them if they still wanted to see their father and they both said they didn't want to see him anymore so I decided not to let them see him. I thought they must have felt something when he tried to kill me once. I hope I can live with my two daughters and give them enough love with my parents from now on. How did you like this story? Please also subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.